All right, Mr. Kleist's Algebra 2 class. For those of you without a graphing calculator, if you do not have a graphing calculator, uh, I'm going to show you what to do in order to calculate these points that we've chosen right here. And I'm just going to work very quickly with this left part of the graph. How in the world would you plug that into your calculator? You do need to have a GI30X2S or one of the calculators that allows you um, to edit uh, what's happening on oops, on the home screen. So if I go to the home screen on my GI83+, plus, you know, I'm not going to use that table function. Okay, so this is how you do it without using this table function right here. Because, let's face it, um, many of the, the, many calculators don't have that function. So I want to plug in negative 5 and 1,000 into this function right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to plug that in. I need to put left parentheses because everything in the numerator here is grouped together. Everything in that numerator is grouped together, just like everything in the denominator is grouped together. So those imaginary parentheses I need to make sure I include when I'm putting this, uh, when I'm plugging this into my calculator. And I'm going to plug in negative 5 and 1,000. I'm going to add three or subtract three from that. Close the parentheses. Divide that quantity by the quantity of, and this is where it gets just a little bit tricky because I'm going to enter into my calculator negative five and one thousand squared. In order to do that, I must put that in parentheses. So I got to have a double parentheses there, negative five and 1,000, and I want to square that value. I can either raise that value to the second power, or some of you might notice on your calculators that you have that button right there. Okay, nice little squared button. Um, just in case you don't have it, I'm going to raise it to the second power. And then I'm going to add to that six times, well, six times what? negative 5 and 1,000. 6 times negative 5 and 1,000. And then last but not least, I'm going to add 5 to that. That's right. I'm going to add 5. I need to close the parentheses because I'm telling it to take that this group of information, right? I want to take this group of information and divide it by this group of information. By information, I mean numbers. Sometimes I just like to use different words. Hit Enter. Oh, about negative 2,000 about negative 2,000. So that's where I would come down here and I would say, okay, that's about negative 2,000. Just about negative 2,000. It really doesn't matter because I can't graph it on this. My scale, I'm going by ones here, just marking every second one. Okay, I just know it's really, really far down there. And that's really, really close to this vertical asymptote. So if I were, if I were graphing this without that table function, that's what I want to know. I want to know that's really far down there. And then what happens, you know, just off of it. So I'm just going to plug in, eh, negative 6. About negative 6. This is where, this is a trick that you really want to pay attention to, okay? If, if, if you're watching a movie right now, maybe on the TV, if you're uh, eating your Cheerios, you know, you definitely want to pay attention to this. This is the second entry function. Second entry will recall what you just had there. Okay, it'll recall what you just had there. So, obviously, I can clear that off. Second entry. It's the up button on the TI-30X2Ss. You just hit up once, okay, and it'll recall that information. So, second entry recalls what I just had. Actually, not what I just had. Hit second entry again. Second entry. All right. Maybe I cleared it out. I might have cleared it out of the memory. Okay. Either way. I want to plug in now negative 6. So I can just go back, delete, delete. I want that to be a negative 6. Pretty straightforward, right? I want this to be a negative 6. I'm going to delete and delete, right? Make sure that's in parentheses. That's going to become a positive value. You've probably heard me mention that before. And then I want negative 6 here. Okay. 
Oh, negative 1 and 8 tenths. Negative 1 and 8 tenths. So, at negative 6, negative 1 and 8 tenths. And understand, I can't take up a lot of time because I don't have that table function. You know, I, I really have to make good use of my time. Boy, that's something that I can kind of graph in there. So it's going to go through that point, negative 6. That's negative 5, negative 6. And there's that point right there. And then um, I want to plug in negative 8. So if I hit second entry, oh, look, it did at that time. Just go back here, change this to an 8. Change all those 6s to 8s. Very easy process. If I have that, that recall function, boy, what an awesome function. There. Okay. And about negative 1 half. So about negative 1. Oh, look, I already have that graph right here. Right over there. And I like to go ahead and say, ah, it's about negative 0 0.5. Mr. Black, negative 0 0.5. 0 and 5 tenths. All right. So I've got those three. And now I'm just going to check, okay, what would, it, what would happen to it at when x approaches something really, really, really far left? And this is where, boy, you want to stop eating your Cheerios or your Fruit Loops, whatever you're eating right now. You want to pay attention again because I, I want to put uh, negative 100 into there. And you might notice that there's not enough spaces for me to do that. I can go here to second, and the opposite of delete is insert. Second insert, and that's where I can put in my negative 100 value. If I really want to know very, very far left, look, I could put in negative 1,008. It really doesn't matter. So negative 1,008, I'm just going to put... Um, I have to enter the same thing into each one. Okay, negative 1,008. And then here, I'm just going to go ahead and enter that. Understand, I could delete that out. Um, insert. Yeah, I'll put, put 100 in front of the 8, make 1,000, negative 100,000, negative 1,008. All right. Oh, and it gets very, very, very close to that horizontal asymptote. So understand, that's how we go back and we check our values there. Um, I, know, I know that takes a lot of time. Okay, I, really, I know it takes a lot of time, but if you want to graph these functions, that's, that's how you have to do it. Just be thankful that you have a calculator, and we don't have to go back and actually substitute it in and perform all the operations. Yeah, be thankful for that. All right, so that is how to complete uh, the graphing of the points of a rational function without that graphing calculator, if you just have that basic calculator. So hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you for watching, and uh, enjoy that breakfast. Enjoy those Cheerios.